One main world, one creation dream. For this class, we are going to have a small recap, we are going to have a tornado, we are going to do some quick fixes and learn how to increment the amount of disasters, then I'm going to give some time to explain you how to participate and how to get more chances to win, and then I'm going to ask a section about questions and answers, so if you want to know how something is made really specifically, a mate, uh, just let me know here, okay? And I know that you are really good, I'm really expecting to see your maps. Alright, so we are going to start with the tornado guys, okay? And how it works with the tornado? It's uh, something or not really hard, okay? So let me explain the main thing about this. Just to let you know, the tornado is just a mob. That's it. It's a creature that moves around the arena. And the creature follows you as any creature in many words that, uh, that attacks. So you can use a Savage as an example as a base for it. The only difference is that the, this tornado is completely invisible, okay? So we are going to use the invisible model. And uh, what it does is actually have an extra script that actually pulls down the player. But actually the tornado, as always, as I mentioned before, is just a move, a move that moves around the area, okay? I see. Yes, don't worry, we are going to learn also the non-gravity, but I'm going to teach you how to do that apart into the week, okay? All right, so now let's go to the practical part how it works for the tornado and, and here i forgot to change this all right now it's a little bit clear all right so how it works for the tornado guys remember the yellow dot that's the one that we are going to check so as always if um, the timer that is called this tornado is on our system is going to do the next trigger Okay, if this number, if this timer is more than zero, right? Every one second, the system is going to send a signal and it's going to start the tornado system. What is that? What it does is very simple. Just simple every seconds is going to execute this. It's going to execute a tornado, a trigger. And what it's going to do is that it has 5% chances to spawn a mob, that is the tornado mob. And that's it. Of course, the tornado mob is going to have some specific features. First, it's going to, to work in an area of 10 blocks. That means that if you are close enough 10 blocks to the tornado, the tornado is going to start dragging you out, okay? What it does is actually to create a knockback to the players, uh, creating the same feature that we use for the earthquake uh, that is going to push the players, okay? But it takes two different positions. So let me show you with the dots pretty quickly. Imagine that the red or the green dot is the plier and the yellow one is the tornado, okay? What it's going to do the tornado, it's just going to first calculate or yes, populate the um, different uh, like uh, directions into the map and it's going to check which one is the direction between the plier and the tornado. Okay, once we get the direction, what it's going to do is just to invert the direction to its own and then it's going to pull the plier under, okay? So instead of just like doing a, a script or something to invert the direction, we are going to give a negative impulse to this. So instead of pushing the plier one or three blocks, we are going to push the plier minus one or minus three or minus four blocks. That's why the, the tornado actually drags the player. So that's something in theory, in practical part, we have to do that on scripts. If that's not possible or it's very hard to do it in triggers to complicate it in scripts is much easier, okay? And apart from that, the tornado apart from this area that is going to drag the players, it's going to have a projectile, okay? It's going to create a projectile like, that looks like a block and as the tornado also uh, moves the projectiles, it's going to look like it's uh, just taking some blocks from the floor, okay? All right, that's how the tornado works in the theory. In the practical part, we are going to go to Miniword to start creating our tornado, okay? So let me switch to Miniword screen, okay? And in Miniword screen, guys, you are going to see, as always, this menu. Of course, some of you are going to have a different interface 
to the new update of the mini words uh, version. But don't worry, you will be able to find this in Creata. Where you hit Creata, you are going to find this new menu, okay? So, what you are going to do first, uh, you are going to access to your map as always. And when you are in your map, when your map already loads, what you are going to do is that you are going to go to the plugin editor. So we have two big requirements for this. The first one is going to have, or actually three, but the basic objects are going to be just two, okay? So what you have to do here, you are going to access here, right over here, and we are going to start creating first our creature, okay? So we are going to add a new creature here. You are going to create a creature from zero, just hit create and hit again in add, okay? You are going to see this menu and what you are going to do for this menu is that you are going to change the name. You are going to put tornado base and probably you are going to have this, like uh, this text is being displayed, guys, you have to turn off that, okay? For the model, remember in the previous classes, we learned how to create an invisible model, okay? So you have to select that specific model from here. Uh, for doing that, you have to actually search for that one. Of course, I already have it insulated here. It says do me size one or two, that is an invisible model. Then you are going to change the size to the max amount, okay? In this case, two or three, whatever number you want to give to your tornado. My system is going to work well with you because it's going to create effects for the tornado without having to do, to do any specific thing, okay? Yes. Okay, I'm um, like going to, to tell you that later, uh, Jude, uh, Miguel Echari, a long time in the sea. Hi, how are you, Joseph? How are you today? So welcome FC, um, FC at Spin. Welcome to the class. Okay, guys, uh, moving back to the class again. Um, for this one, guys, remember invisible model here. So with that, you're not going to detect any player, or there's not going to be any model for it. Now for attribute, you have to choose monster, guys. And let me explain. Sorry. Uh, yeah, you, you are going to choose monsters. It's okay. For the hilt, you are going to increase the hilt. We don't want the players to kill the tornado. And so you are going to increase the max amount, okay? Attack, you are going to keep it in one, guys. That's the number. And very important, your tornado needs to be movable, okay? So you are going to turn on the movable part for the tornado. And on here, choose your favorite speed. In my game, and the speed is going to be 600, but you can choose whatever speed you want it, but be sure that your tornado will be able to move. My recommendation, my personal one, is keep it in between 400 and 600, okay? In movement characteristics, uh, just be sure that you hit can swim if you have water in your map. And that's it. The other things need to be off on here. On battle, you are going to be sure that your tornado can attack and the view field is at the max, okay? On here, the attack needs to be on, um, the attack type is going to be male, automatically attack in assault mode, because if you place in passive, your mode tornado is not going to move. And that's it, as you see, we don't have much other things. Okay, so, what we are going to do extra, okay? You are going to create a new trigger here, where it says partial trigger. When you get on partial trigger, you are going to add a new feature that says when this creature is being created and then you are going to add a new feature that is creature automatic pathfinding and then on automatic pathfinding you are going to select creature in the event and you are going to move to the player position okay player location so you select here function player player location and then you are going to choose a random player for doing that you select here on player group random player in player set and you are going to select random player in team red, team one, okay? That's it, guys. This is going to, to actually make the tornado follows any player when the map starts, okay? And that's it for now. Now, what you are going to do here, okay? As uh, we already have here the tornado base created, you are going to see the next thing. And let me use a block here to place the tornado in the floor because I know that 
that you want to check the difference, of course. But if you place your tornado in game, your tornado, it's going to be in the game. Let me search for it. It's this one, tornado base. As you see, it's not going to have any icon, so it looks like I didn't place anything, but actually I did. Let me place it right here. So you will be able, and I will be able to kick, kick the tornado very quickly. But as you see here, I have the, my tornado here. Oh, I think I put it, but I actually didn't. Now, I have my tornado here right now. And as you see, the tornado is just here, but as you see, there is no any model for it, okay? Because we are going to change the model via triggers or via scripts. As you see, I move here and I pull the push the tornado down to the abyss, okay? So, in this part, we already create our mob, all right? Now, we are going to start creating the next thing. And it's that if you know this in game, and let me show you the tornado working in real time, a second here let me change a couple of things so you will be able to see in real time the tornado this is going to reduce the amount of time and on disaster controllers i'm just going to change the number here just a moment between one and eight sorry we are going to put a actually to execute only the tornado all right so, guys, very important, I want you to see some specific things about the tornado. And on here I'm going to be farther away from the center because the tornado always expound around the center. Alright. Okay. That's something that I I made it wrong, okay? So as you see, the tornado is right here, and it's following me in all the map here, as you see. You see, guys, this is the tornado, but of course, right now, it's having not uh, the tornado activated, okay? But as you see, it's just a demo following me into all the arena, okay? That's how it works. As you see, it's, it's very simple. It's not that much complicated. Alright, so now let me see if activating this is going to work. Okay, we are going to be around the center. And yeah, as you see, there are some blocks that are moving around the tornado that make the player looks like the tornado is destroying the actual map, okay? And also these blocks deal damage to the player if they hit it, and also they, those blocks destroy parts of the different um, buildings, so it's going to look like the tornado is, is destroying some parts of the building, okay? So that's what we have to do again, okay? So what we are going to do right now is that we are going to access two triggers again, again, okay, guys, sorry, triggers not I, for plugins. And in plugins, you are going to go to props, okay, guys? Remember the earthquake, we are going to do almost the same. You can copy that uh, specific uh, projectile or you can create new one from zero. So remember to create a projectile, just hit here and new, hit on create, again, hit a new and select ammo projectile, okay? It's the one that looks like a TNT or a dynamite once you have it added it's into the game you are going to do the next changes first you are going to select the model it's going to be just the same model that we use for the earthquake it's a block literally it's uh, just a square uh cube and then you are going to change the name for tornado okay for the attributes guys First, you need to change the attack, a change the attack of, of um, according to the amount of damage that you want to do to the player if the player it gets hit by this block. The gravity needs to be around 4. The initial speed is very low, it's 80. And the velocity or the speed attenuation is going to be 0, okay? All the other things are going to be completely off on this part. And on skills, we are going to add a new skill. The skill is going to be operating blocks. On operating blocks, you are going to select effect type, destroy, item, 
drop is going to be no drop, okay? A target category is going to be all blocks and then range type is going to be single, okay? Once you add this specific projectile to your game, remember that you need to restart your map, okay? As always, you need to restart your map to make the changes. So, so I'll just hit enter game and with that it's going to, to be working. Okay, okay, give me a second here. All right, so once you played or you change that, let me do here some specific um, test. Okay, so once you are in game again, okay, you what you are going to do is to be sure that you have your projectile, okay? I'm just doing a test, a simple test here. I just want to be sure because it seems that the script uh, weren't working the first time. So I just want to be sure that the tornado is working and it seems that it's not working. So I'm going to change that script. As you see here, it's not working. The script that probably I'm going to give you. So I'm going to give you another one. Don't worry, guys, okay? Um, I'm going to use just the normal one. For some reason, this one is making some errors. Oh, I see what is the problem here. It seems that I paste uh, the wrong, um, the wrong actually, um, the wrong script here. So that's why it wasn't working. So let me switch very quickly here to the one that I have, okay? So guys, first step that you are going to do apart from this is that we are going to copy and paste the next thing, okay, guys? So you are going to access to this website, as always, guys, for those that are just coming, remember that in this website, I save or I store all my codes for the classes. Okay, guys, the, the first link that I just uh, shared with you is the directly for the tornado. The second one is where you can find all the different scripts. And what you are going to do once you open here is that you are going to be sure that this is not being traducted to any kind of language. Why? Because probably you are going to have um, this, this specific part of the code like this in uh, just for reading and be easier for read for you in your personal language. That could be Chinese, that could be Thailand, a uh, Thailand, a uh, Thai language, or it can be Spanish, or it can be English, or Portuguese, whatever. You need to be sure that that is completely off because if you copy the code with this, it's not going to work. Okay. So remember, just in the top, where is the search bar? You are always are going to find a button for the traduction, and you need to be sure that it's actually showing you the original code. Okay. On here, you can find this specific disaster that is going to be the disaster tornado. And what you are going to do is just copy and paste all the things here from the line number one. Be sure that here you can find the lines, okay? To the line number 161, okay? 161. And also be sure that you are not copying parts like this, as an example, apart from the text on here or apart from the text of here. Be sure that you are not doing that okay very important guys be sure that you only copy the code and also in mobile devices probably you are not going to see the code directly you have to hit a button that says show content or show code okay now very important what you are going to do here in uh, that was a piece, big mistake for me it's that you are going to paste uh, the code here in the script and you are going to set up a couple of things here, okay? So let me use another software that I use just to be able to do some out and some in, and so you, are, you will be able to see better the code, okay? All those things are going to be the tornado, but you don't have to worry for reading the code. On here, always, always, guys, I placed this section, okay? The first one is which explains what the code is going to do actually, what is going to require, and then you are going to have a section that says setup and also says um, another words in Spanish. So remember, I always place two lines and after the two lines, I place the word in the other language. Okay, so for English, it's going to be setup. And on here you have the main setup or the main, yeah, the main setup. You only have to set up um, just two things, okay? 
those are optional. Uh, you don't have to worry. Most of the times with the already setup that I have here is going to work. But you have those extra options. But the only the two first are going to be the required. And it's very simple. We need to get the Doomy ID for the Doomy, okay, for the mob that uh, moves the tornado. And also we need to get the projectile that creates um or that is created around the tornado, okay? So let me increase a little bit the size a little bit more, and you are going to see the next thing. Jejo tornado to me or dummy. It's going to be equals to three. That's the number of your dummy. And Jejo tornado missile or projectile is going to be the projectile. Okay. So how do you change that? On here, if you're in mini word, you are going to delete the number here. Okay. Just the number. And then you are going to hit in the ID library. On here, you have an, op an option that says creature, okay? So you are going to select creature, and then you are going to go to custom, and you are going to select your tornado, the invisible tornado that we just create. And then on here, you are going to have another number, you delete it, and then you are uh, just click on ID library, and you are going to select item, okay? On item, you are going to go to custom, and in custom, you are going to select the tornado projectile, okay? Be sure that you don't choose the tornado base, Movec, because that's going to probably create a lot of ammo tornadoes around. Just select the tornado block, okay? The tornado block. And that's it. That's all the things that you have to do. Of course, uh, as always, on here, if you need to get the item ID in, in cell phones, because I know that in cell phones you cannot sometimes, uh, do mini word limitations what you are going to do is just copy a, a script that I have here in the same page you are going to find one that says get item id you just copy and paste it into your scripts and save it that is all this is small code and it's going to tell you the number that you have in your hands okay now what you're going to do after that okay after you set up you just test okay and if everything goes well and if everything is going to work, um, the tornado here is going to start by itself because the tornado does all the effects that you see before, okay? All right, let's see. As you see, the tornado is just starting and we create two tornado. Cool things about the tornadoes, guys. The tornadoes are going to be able to get and match together. So if two tornadoes are spinning very close, they are going to drag each other and they are going to create a much powerful tornado like you see on here. And also, if we have more than one disaster, the, the, the tornado may change. As an example, you are going to have a fire tornado or a thunder tornado and it's going to change depending on the different projectiles. As you see, we have a super tornado here. All right, so that's the cool things about the tornado, okay? So right now, if everything goes right, if everything is going oh, to work, when you place in run mode, very important, not in creation mode, in run mode, if you place a tornado in game, let me do this example. On here, let me change the plugins and let's select the tornado. We are going to place it here into this box if you place the tornado here if you are in even in in run mode it's supposed that the tornado is going to work okay if you set up well this, this script okay let me try to place it yes as you see the tornado is working by itself okay so that's very important guys how that's the first part of the tornado and now what we left to do is just uh, to generate the tornado around this area. So, in the difference between the tornado is that the tornado is not going to be created up here because if we do that, most of the tornadoes are going to fall from our island or our island. <laughs> I already learned how to pronounce that word. <laughs> Thank you so much for the for the tip. Um, what we are going to do is to create a tornado just like we spawn the pliers. Remember that the pliers are going to spawn around this area randomly. We are going to do the same. So the tornado is always going to be around the center, okay? So how we are going to do that? As always, we are going to move to triggers, guys. And in triggers, I'm going to ask you to go here where it says 
um, starters and you are going to copy the meteor stars once more, okay? You just hit copy and you are going to place it here in starters. Of course, as always, I'm going to put it in other folder, but you are going to put it in disasters, okay? So once you have the disaster, copy and paste it, you are going to rename it. You are going to put tornado starters, sorry, not the one that it says disasters, just the one that says start. Tornado start, tornado start, sorry. And once you are in there, you have to assign a number for it. So remember to change disaster equals to number eight, because we already create seven disasters before. Now, once you create this part, you need to start changing the information as always, okay? So first things first, we need to change the disaster timer. So you are going to hit on timer when it says operate, and you are going to add a new variable. The name is going to be this tornado, okay? And in this tornado, it's going to last for 30 seconds, all right? And of course, repeat timer needs to be false. Just change the information, don't add nothing new. On here, you are going to change also this name as Tornado. You are going to change the chat that you already have for all the players as a Tornado. And now you are going to change the description. The description for the Tornado, the one that is the players are going to receive in the chat, it says run away from the Tornado, also find a good spot to hide, okay? Uh, you can place whatever you want, you can use the same one that I use if you don't want to overcomplicate. The only thing that this disaster does different on this one is that at the beginning we create a tornado. So you are going to hit here uh, as a new action, then you are going to select creature and you are going to select creature create or create creature, okay? Now that you create a creature, you are going to select the amount and it's going to be only one guys, okay? Very important, you are going to select only one uh, tornado on there uh, you are going to select, of course, in, in just in template library, you are going to select the one that says tornado, okay? Just the invisible creature that we made. Yeah, you are going to select that one. Then you are going to go here on a specific uh, or specified coordination located. And what you are going to do, you are going to select functions, a specified coordination or yeah, coordinate location. And you are going to do the next thing. We are not going to overcomplicate, okay? We are going to start creating the first tornado or the first tornado in the center. So we have two different ways to do this. You can use the, the one that I use that actually are going to be these coordinated, or use, you can use just the area or the location that we created before to set up the tornado. That is going to be this one, okay? So how you are going to do the second one, okay? Just in case you need to do the other one, the only thing that you need to do on here is just put on here, just choose location and then select this location, the map center, okay? But of course, if you want to use manual coordinates, it's going to work also, okay? And very important guys, this needs to belong to no team, okay? So on here, you have to choose no team as if you want your tornado to work fine. And that's it, we have the starter finish, okay? Now, very important guys, we are going to move and we are going to create our disaster. So you need to go to the disaster folder and you are going to copy the meteor loop. We're going just to copy and paste it into the same folder, the folder that says disasters. Once you do that, you are going to change the name of the new one for tornado loop. Okay guys, very important, tornado loop. Remember, as always, starters are going to be different to loops. And you are going to change the next information. First, this tornado needs to change, okay? Uh, so you need to, to use that variable. So in here, you are going to choose the one that says this tornado because you are going to have this meteor here. In conditions, you are going to do the same for the first one. You are going to expand it and you are going to change here. The one that says numerical comparison, this meteor for this tornado greater than zero. And on here, you are going to have just the same, but on here is going to have the number that says 80, right? So if we place 80 here, it's going to create one tornado every one second almost, okay? So you are going to change that. You are going to put just 5%. So with that, is it's going to be not, uh, we are not going to create that much tornado, just like once every, I don't know, every 
10 seconds is going to create a tornado so that's going to be much better and very important guys remember and just remember that uh, we we were using like some specific two variables to set up um, some actions here in the acid rain and also in the tuner storm we are going to do the same so what you are going to do is you are going to add a new a new variable here you are going to select assign value setup and in value setup the first one that you are going to select is the one that we create the last class that says random x okay so random x is going to be set up as random number okay and on here i, I place uh, two different variables guys okay but you can place a number manually okay so what you are going to do guys okay so okay so what you can do is just to get the x value it's just get the coordinates about your map okay so if you don't want to overcomplicate, what you are going to do it's do the next thing okay um just you are going to stand in one of the sides of your map uh, the max amount of blocks that the player can travel in that direction and you are going to open your map and you are going to copy the different address or the different coordinates here but if you don't want to overcomplicate with this another cool way to do it is going to be the next one okay guys so what you are going to do is just add a new you are going to delete all the all the different um actions that you are going to have here because when you paste and copy the meteor you are going to have one here that says create a meteor what you are going to do is just go here under you are going to select creature create a creature all right and the process that you are going to follow, remember that I just is activating this because we can do it much easier. You are going to select here on template library, you are going to select again your tornado. All right. And where it says event position, you are going to select function library and you are going to select location offset. Okay, guys? In location offset, you are going to choose location and you are going to select choose location you are going to select map center and then we are going to play with this so what you are going to do you are going to place the tornado over the map okay so don't do it over the floor because uh, it can fail what you are going to do is to create it some blocks over this so at least 10 blocks over the distance so 14 11 uh, 11 is going to be a good number so i'm going to place that number here my map minimum health is 4, so I'm going to add it um, like 8 more, okay? So it's going to be 12 blocks, okay? And now for the other two numbers, what you are going to do is hit here. Function library, maths, okay? Random number, and you are going to choose a random number in between minus, minus 10 or minus whatever number you want it, minus 15 as an example and uh, the same number but in positive okay so if you place minus 15 on one you place minus uh, just 15 in the other and you are going to do the same here function library match random random number in between minus 15 to the number 15 all right and let me test what the change that we made with this is going to be much easier okay because the one that I was uh, just going to teach you before, it's a little bit complicated. This is going to be much, much, much easier. We are going to check if this one works. And it's supposed to be working. Let me check here. Okay. Yes. As you see, the tornado is working. It's being created. And the tornado is following me. Okay, I get dragged by the tornado and we have two tornadoes here. All right, so that one is also going to work and it's going to be much easier, okay, guys? So just to remind you, once more, you are going to delete all the others that I teach you before. Just keep it like this, okay? So what you are going to do here is just place, create a thunder base in location offset. You select the map center and you give a random number, number 12 of just 10 blocks over the floor and then another random in between the two numbers and that's it with this we already have our tornado um yeah our tornado is 
working, right? It's pulling the pliers, it's being created, but we left as always to add this to our system, okay guys? So remember, I, we always need to add this to our system, so go to basic systems, go to disaster controllers, and once more we need to change the numbers here. So if you are using the, the triggered version, the one that is not with the scripts, just choose the number, one at the beginning, and we were in seven, you are going to change that to number eight to allow the this to spawn, okay? Now, for um, actually the other one, and the one that is with the scripts, you are going to select here, again, you are going to edit, and on here you are going to do the same, just change the seven for the number eight. And then, as always, now that we already have uh, that as a way or as a chance in random numbers, numbers, you are going to add here a trigger operation and you are going to select on here the tornado start, okay? Triggers, starters, tornado start. And the conditions needs to be true, okay? Check the conditions through and that's it. With this, we already have finished all the different um, like the different disasters for our map. So uh, right now you should have a map that is completely pliable, okay guys? So now, as we finish this part, that was the most complicated part, I'm going to do like... Our system already have implemented some specific things, guys, okay? And it's uh, that we, in the first class, we create some specific items that we are not using right now, okay? So the items that we create that we are not using right now, okay, is this one. Let me put it in here. Okay, oh, you know, it's there are no those two. So let me go here and place it. Yeah, it's like the C color. Okay, for water brands, uh, actually, I don't have favorite one. I know that some uh, water brands has like, you know, different flavors, right? Uh, because they come from, I don't know, from a waterfall that is in and some is exotic country and things like that. But for me, it's just water. So I usually don't have like a preferred water. Um, actually, I drink a lot of water, but I um, use normal water, the water from my home. And also it's very, very, very interesting that a specific case in marketing, because depending on the brand of the water, you are going to have a different price in uh, that's something very curious because it's just water, right? So the, the thing that actually gives the water the price is on the, is the brand. And that's something very curious. Okay. So guys, in my case, I create those two specific items. The first one was the item that reduced life for all the pliers. And the second one, that is this one, is the one that increased the amount of disasters that you can have at time in game, okay? So this is going to be very simple. We already created in the first class. This is an item that doesn't do anything. It's a misc item, a misc prop that actually doesn't have any feature. It doesn't, ex you cannot use it. You only can have it in your inventory, okay? And what is going to do our system is going to detect if you get one of those and it's going to increase or decrease the difficulty system. Okay, let me show you a quick example about this. And that's, with that we are going to learn to increase the level of our disasters or increase the difficulty, okay? So on here, let me edit this to get a little bit more of time to get items inside the game. So I will be able to teach you that. The store time, we are going to change it to two minutes, okay? And then we are going to play. Okay, so check these guys. My life is 200 right here, right? My HP. If I get this one, it's going to be decreased to 175 for all the players, not just for me, okay? So that's a way to, that you can increase the difficulty for the game. And the second one is the amount of disasters at the same time. If I get this item, as you see, now I will have two disasters at the same time. And that also works for your restored if you are a developer. If I get these items, I will be able to increase the difficulty for this system a lot, okay? 
So how you are going to do this system, guys? Well, it's much, much easier, okay? So for doing the first one, we already created like the basic item. The only thing that you need to do is to go to the script that was a survival system. Remember that script, guys? Okay. The first one that we import on the first classes, right? So guys, you're going to just to access here. All right, so you are going to access here and you are going to access to the setup section and on here you are going to have a specific point that says flagger points life item, okay? That's the item that um, it's going to be the lives, but next to it and before boobs, you are going to find another that says life reduction. Very important, not the one that says item, the one that says reduction. And on there, you need to place the ID number for the item that is going to reduce the life of all the pliers. Once more, you only need to delete that number, go here and select item, custom, and select the item that is going to reduce the life of all the pliers. That's much it. it does, it's not that complicated, this one. And you save it, okay? Now, if you assist to the first class, probably we are already have it set up. Now, for the second one, that is going to be the disaster amount, you only need to go here, you are going to create a new set of fraggers that is going to be store or items, whatever name you want to give it, okay? And you are going to create a new trigger, you are going to name it as a furry totem or as a um, disaster incrementer or yeah, just something related to increase disasters. In my case, the name of the item is furry totem, but you are going to give any kind of name to it, okay? And what you are going to do is to place the next event. You are going to place flyer. Flyer obtains an effect, an item, okay? Obtain props. Don't use the one that says use props. You are going to use the one that says obtain. Then you are going to select in, in conditions, you are going to select item and determine item type, okay? Once you select item type, you are going to select on here, just the item that you create to increase at the difficulty of our system. If you don't have any item, just create a new one. Remember, it's a miss item, it doesn't uh, do anything, but just select that item here, as you see. Now, what you are going to do um, for the next thing, okay? First, we are going to change the disaster max. Remember that we have a variable that says disaster max, you are going to add a new one here that says a new action that says assigned and you are going to select value setup, okay? On value setup, you are going to select into the variables the one that says disasters max or disasters at time or disasters at the same time, whatever name you place to it. Then uh, remember that this variable was already created at the beginning of the, when we start creating our scripts and triggers as, and on here we are going to put function library Math numeric calculation, okay? And on here, we are just going to select again disaster max and we are going to add one, okay? What does it mean? So that we are going to increase the disasters uptime. Then I'm going to teach you a secret, guys. Always, when you do a numeric calculation, be sure that the player is not going to accept the limits. And for that, we have a specific new feature or any specific features inside triggers that is called max, okay? So you are going to add another setup value. So you are going to select assign, set up a value. On the value, you are going to select this max. And then on here, you are not going to place numeric calculation. Instead, you are going to go to max and then you are going to select a maximum value, okay? So let me explain how it works. On maximum value, you can choose two different values, okay? And you want you have another option, okay? But the important thing here is that if the number set uh, the maximum value that you are going to tell to the game, and just like the maximum value for this is going to be five, if the variable is in more than that, it's going to just be reduced to the max amount of number. With that, you can set up as an example, the life of some monster that cannot increase the life about something or the max income for a player. So the player won't be able to get more income, as an example, more coins than the one that you place on there. And that's exactly what we are going to do. We are going to select here this, the disasters max on here, just the same variable here. 
We are going to place an armor, and in my game, the max amount of disasters that you can have at the same time is five because we only have a eight disasters. And very important, guys, at the end, you are going to have an option that says max or min. Okay. If you want to keep at max at the value of five, uh, you are going to hit min. That means that if we get more than five, it's going to reduce it to five. In the other case, imagine that you want not the player to lose uh, or to get less life than one, you place here. So it's going to choose the max value. So if the player gets less than one value of life, less, less than one, it's going to increase life as one. For this case, you are going to select minimum value and that's it. Now, with that, it, we already have our disaster controller or, um, or yeah, now we're disaster like completed. Now we are going to do something important, guys, and is that we are going to delete the item that the player has. Okay, so you are going to select a, on here item. You are going to select delete. Um, sorry, you are going to select player, and you are going to select this uh, remove item. Okay, and when you select item, you are going to select players in trigger an event. You are going to select one and item type employer event, okay? That's it. Now, of course, we already finished this. This is going to work. This is just going to increase the difficulty. As you see, it's not that much complicated. It's just to change in a number here, but uh, also we need to let the players know that actually this is happening, okay? And how do you do that? It's very simple, guys. On here, you are going to do as always the things that we do, that is just Select here, player group, and display a chat group to the players to tell the players, hey, these players increase the difficult system to number two and some separators. So separators is very simple. You just place um, some scores on there. For the other one, you need to select all the players as always, and the content is going to be a string concatenation. Remember, when you select function library and string concatenation is going to allow you to to put the two different strings on here, in one could be a number, one could be a word, okay? Or whatever you want to place in there. So the first one, I put max disaster set to, and then on the second value, I put function library convert value to a string that is going to allow, you, allow us to select a variable, and then I select a disasters max, okay? Also, then I add a, a sound that is going to be played for all the players, that is going to be this one. That is the mark number 20. And that's it. As you see, it's not that much complicated. I also create like an effect on the player. That is the particle 23. It does, it's not required, but you, you can use that one also, or you can use whatever model, okay? 23 is going to be this one. So every time that the players get that item, the player is going to spawn this effect for some seconds. And that's it, guys. With this, officially, we have finished our map, okay? So I'm going to take some time to read your question. So, some quick fixes that we are going to do. And thank you so much for reminding me that. Uh, some, or there are some things that I want you to check, okay? And the first thing is that probably you are not having a model for your pledge, okay? Because the pledge is... it's the, the virus is not going to be seen if you want your map to show the virus what you can do is just go ahead and create here a new trigger okay you are going to call it as an fx virus or as an fx bleach you are going to add a new one you are going to say when any creature is created okay as an event the condition is going to be creature creature type and you are going to select your pledge or your virus and you are going to select play a special effect to a creature and you can play whatever effect you want to choose for any specific creature so and with that you are going to replace the model for that creature for the effect okay so for the virus i select this one but you can choose you have a lot of options here you can choose whatever model you want to give to your virus okay and that was something that i want to teach you how to do because yeah of course i know that that you that that that's something that i forgot to tell you okay i'm going to change the model uh, while we would talk that's a quick fix um another quick fix guys uh, sometimes there could be some errors here that may affect your map some common errors will be first um 
that your disasters are not uh, being working or are not being created for some specific reason that can happen a lot and most of the times that happens because you forgot to actually change the numbers so for, as an example you have two or more disasters that are happening at the same time okay that happens uh, when actually you place the same numbers for two different disasters in the starter option, okay? By mistake, that can happen a lot and uh, in my Spanish class it happened twice. So just going to tell you how I correct that. But just let me choose a good effect for this one. Okay, I'm not going to complicate, I like the one that is by default. But guys, how do you solve if you get more than one disaster at the same time? You need to go here to the starters and you need to check that this variable is different for each one, okay? You are going to check if you have one that is repeated here. You need to change the number. As you see, none of those is repeated. Another thing that can may affect that is that in the disasters or repeaters, this first option or this one, it's using another disaster so be sure that the name of the of your disaster match with the timer that is this material on here and also on here okay so if you see that this uh, disaster name is different that means that probably you are going to have two different disasters executing at the same time okay so be sure that everything match here for all your disasters as you see earthquake is here earthquake is here earthquake is here okay so I see as an example that my volcano eruption could be failing. Just go to the volcano and be sure that all the three things are just working together, okay? That all of them are just in the same way, just to be sure. Okay, another error that can may happen, guys. Your fire is not working, or as an example, the acid rain is not working. Be sure that, as an example, if the AC train doesn't have like this extra, uh, the, this extra condition that says random number, okay? For the ra random uh, uh, acid random uh, rain loop or for the earthquake, okay? Let me see here. Disaster, yes. I'm just doing a double check here to be sure that actually all the disasters are working fine. This virus is working. Acid rain, thunderstorm, earthquake. Yes. All the disasters here are having their same number, okay? Okay, and those are going to be the basics fixes. Uh, I don't know if you want to learn something else. Oh, of course. How do you do the store in game that I always do here, right? That's something that I want to teach you extra. As always, guys, I already teach this in the previous class, but I know that some of you didn't know how to do it. So, for creating the store block, you know, when I play in the game, okay, I have uh, this item here uh, that is going to show me all the different items that I can get into the game, and also this is going to be spawned when I just, uh, just enter to the game, okay? So how do you do that, guys? As always, the only thing that you need to do here is to access to the website that I teach you, as always, that where is all my different strings and triggers and all the things that I submit for Miniword. On here, there is an option that says store block, and you are going to copy and paste uh, that specific script. You are going to paste it here in Miniword once more, just like you paste the others. Just go to it. And then go to scripts and in scripts you are going to add a new script okay as you see it i have it already here okay and when you have it as always you have a setup part here okay well, there is one that says toolbox item you need to place under the id item of the object that you want to use to open the store so whenever the player use that item it's going to open this store okay if you want to check this a little bit better and you want to check a detail how you can do that, remember that day in the last minicamp we learned how to do that. Okay, just to let you know. Um, 